Thanks again to everybody who is logging in. We've got a pretty large crowd coming in today, um, but we're going to get started here in uh, just a couple seconds. First of all, I'll just thank everybody for say, taking some time here out of their Wednesday to join us. Uh, we've been doing these sessions now uh, for over a year, and uh, you know, honestly, the the feedback and um, the 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 information you guys have shared with us in terms of the types of topics that you'd like to do uh, have been fantastic and we look forward to more feedback uh, from all of you so uh, officially uh, let me introduce myself my name is John Mana so I'm part of the ServiceNow Solutions team here at CDW and um, this is one of our educational uh, sessions part of a workshop series that we do one of our favorite ones um, meaning you know we do all different topics but twice a year we do something in line with the brand new build or release of ServiceNow coming out where we kind of argue amongst ourselves behind the scenes of what our top five features are. And, um, you know, then we, we, we get going. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the San Diego release. And uh, with that, we've got a number of speakers here that are going to take us for a tour. Of, of things here. Uh, first off, we're going to be joined by uh, a really great partner of ours. Eric Schwartz is part of ServiceNow, but he's part of our team, and uh, he'll help deliver some of the content. We've got Jay, who's an advisory solutions consultant here, as well as Eris Canabrava, who is um, a manager of uh, our R&D team, among other things. So it's super exciting to get started, so I'm not going to delay any longer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know get the presentation over to Eric. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and um, move the ball over to Eric Schwartz. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Let's see if I can't share my screen without blowing everything up. So uh, you should see my screen and I'm good. going to go into presenter mode. So you should see the slide. Everything good, John? You're good. All right, perfect. So thank you and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, you may remember me from such features as the what's new in the Rome release webinar that I helped uh, do a couple months ago. So I'm happy that you've returned to us. And if not, if you're here for the first time, welcome. San Diego is the next release and uh, and there's a bunch of good stuff that we have for you. Before we jump into those new features though, I do want to talk about one thing. Um, the way that we package our products and solutions, San Diego is helping us uh, continue to frame it in um, this new way where we're really promoting the experiences that you get out of using ServiceNow and the platform. And the primary experiences that we power are customer experiences, technology experiences, employee experiences, operating excellence, and building and automation. And across all those experiences, we have a couple of unique uh, solutions specifically for certain industries, uh, focusing on financial services, the technology industry, uh, telecommunications, and manufacturing. And if you're uh, new to ServiceNow, uh, you should know that Basically, ServiceNow is applicable to nearly any industry. It just goes, just so happens that we've had some unique uh, use cases that are specific to certain industries that have allowed us to develop uh, specific solutions that cross multiple experiences, which is what we're packaging in these individual industry solutions. But it doesn't mean that uh, it's limited to those. Basically, sky is the limit. And if it's something that isn't working out of the box, you could certainly build it from scratch as well. So the biggest update that you'll actually see with your eyes related to the San Diego update is what we're calling the next experience. It is a new UI and design language that will transcend the entire platform. And there are three key pillars of the new next user experience. One of them being the now experience UI framework this is essentially how everything is put together. And that all comes together with what we have called the UI builder that allows you to actually build the applications and workspaces and customize your applications to be what you want within the new uh, modernized visual design language. And the new modern uh, design language is a very clean, easy to read and customize 
uh, look and feel. Uh, you'll see that I'm going to do a quick demo for you guys about what it does look like. And ultimately, this new UI design and the builder uh, come together in this unified platform UI, which means that the uni uh, experience that you're going to get is going to be unified across the board. And that means that as a user jumping into service now, the experience that you get from one workspace, regardless of the application, is going to be very similar, and it's going to enable um, a much uh, easier ramp to utilize ServiceNow as well as switching between applications. It's all going to be very similar to you. So the first part I mentioned, the UI builder, this is the component that's going to help you build your applications um, and the UI component of them. This is also going to allow you that if you're an existing customer and you have workspaces or apps that are built with some of the older uh, UI, this is going to help you update them. One of the key components of the new look and feel is the, BL, the ability to support upgrade ability. So regardless of how much you configure or customize the UI or the other workspaces to be what you need for your use cases in your business, the new UI enables you to have a much more seamless upgrade process uh, when you have those customizations. As I mentioned, we have a new visual design. This is a quick glimpse of it. I will show you more about it when we jump into the demo, but it's a true modern aesthetic. It goes throughout the entire platform, and um, we still have the classic applications that are available with the new UI look and feel. Um, and this is going to power everything from our new landing page, which is, of course, a role-based landing page where when you jump into ServiceNow, this is what you get. It gives you what you need with a new navigation bar on top. Um, that new navigation bar is going to have a couple of tabs as well as a search. It'll show you your profile image. I will show you this in more detail during the demo. Um, but one key thing is the uh, the pill, what we call at the very, very top, where you, in this case you see the ITIL dashboard. It's always going to show you where you are. And it's just going to make, it's a tiny little improvements that make the experience that much better. As part of the a new UI, uh, we also have easy to configure user preferences. These are going to persist uh, through your different logins, regardless of the device. So if you modify, we have dark mode now. So when you're working late at night, you can go ahead and change dark mode and it'll It'll uh, make it easier on your eyes, but those kinds of configuration changes will persist and you'll be able to jump in and make those changes and then, you know, log in from somewhere else. Uh, we also have updated the look and feel of all of our dashboards, reports, and uh, embedded analytics. Uh, this should make reading this data a lot easier. It should create some seamless transitions between um, uh, your current uh, data that you're looking at and new data that you bring in um, into the new San Diego release. And when you're looking at the overall guidance on what you want to do when you're considering uh, building applications in ServiceNow or jumping into ServiceNow as a new customer, um, if you're not a new customer and you have applications that have been built in Quebec or Rome, uh, now that you're going to be upgrading to San Diego is a time when we suggest uh, starting to use some of the new design language and build your workspaces and applications in the new design or plan to start upgrading them. If you are a new customer, then you, starting with San Diego provides you with the perfect opportunity to utilize the new capabilities that we've released. And what you should know is that the the fact that you've seen some of the new design language in previous releases with Rome, with some of our workspaces, and now that design spans the entire platform. And now what we'll do is moving forward beyond San Diego, there will be even further enhancements to the UI and uh, transitions between mobile and your desktop experience and whatnot. And that's why we're trying to uh, make it available to everybody to start building those uh, the new UI into what it is you're doing to ensure, you know, moving forward, it's going to be a seamless experience and it's going to be the same UI across the board. 
Now, if you want to learn more about the UI, I suggest you go into the community page that we have on uh, servicenow.com. Uh, search for Now Experience Center of Excellence. It's a boatload of resources about the UI. You can go super deep and technical into the rules and regulations around how we built it. You can also read about how you can build your own components in the new UI, and there's a bunch of information and training there available to you. Now, when I mentioned a couple slides ago about the future, if you're interested in jumping into the future and having some of the newer UI and capabilities available to you in your dev instances, you can take a quick photo of this QR code, jump into the community product lab, and you'll actually be able to be an early adopter of a lot of the new capabilities that we have available in uh, the San Diego release and beyond. Hope you all participate. So let's jump into the uh, demo real quick. So first we have the brand new login screen. In this case, this is a, a specific customer, Solana, and I'm gonna log in as Beth. And uh, here is now the new landing page. So you'll see across the top, we have a bunch of these different tabs and the home pill, like I mentioned. When we click on the all, uh, tab, you'll see your standard filter, nav filter navigator that you would typically be used to seeing. When you uh, click the pin, you can pin it so it's going to realign the main UI, and now it's pinned just like it always used to be. And I can, of course, unpin it and then move to the next thing. I can click on favorites. I can go ahead and I can pin my favorites. I can click on history. This is going to give me the history, and this is all, you know, quick tabs that are always available to you to jump around in and out of the interface and where you need to go. I can go back to favorites and then I can click on the incidents uh, page. This is a favorite that I have. And um, now in the incidents page that I see the entire table, all the information that I have to, that I have here. But what I want to do is I'm going to start to customize some of those UI elements I mentioned in my preferences. So I'm going to open up the preferences, click on display and here I can do two things. I'm going to add in the line breaks and uh, compact spacing. So you'll see behind this, the UI is changing. When I put the line breaks in, it's basically text wrapping. And when I text wrap, everything gets compacted so I can see all of the columns without needing to scroll left and right. And that's just one of the simple but quality of life improvements that the new UI has made. So it's going to make navigating and viewing a lot of information inside of ServiceNow much more uh, available to everybody and, and especially for different screen sizes. So now I'm going to jump into favorites. I'm going to go ahead and um, go back to my landing page. Here I am back uh, where I was. I'm going to go ahead and go back to preferences. Here, I'm going to go ahead and switch to dark mode. You'll see I could switch to dark mode. Everything changes. It's like inverse colors, something you're probably familiar with on your mobile device and whatnot. So when you're working late at night, the lights are out. You can go ahead and make changes and, and have it be a little bit easier on the eyes. I'm going to switch it back for now since it's not nighttime. And I'm going to go to one more thing here. Um, uh, you'll also notice that in the main landing page, we have a... Uh, a guided tour so we're not leaving anybody in the dust when you upgrade they're going to be able to see this and they're going to check out the guided tour it's going to kind of go through some of the things that i just went through with regards to the new ui the filter navigator and the different tabs that you have available to you so we want to make sure that when you do upgrade and you have new users uh looking at this that they're not left out and you don't need to do a whole bunch of training they can look at that quick quick and jump right in now, the next thing I want to show you real quick is workspaces. So part of the new UI and design language enables some seamless capabilities across all the different functions within ServiceNow. Here, we're going to jump into the workspaces. This is a CSM, FSM configurable workspace. It shows me my main dashboard, which is all of the important items that are available to me in some cases that are open. And uh, you'll notice I can toggle that it's a favorite uh, item for me. And if I do that, it's going to show up in my favorites. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on this incident or the, excuse me, this case. And when I, once I click on the case, it's going to immediately pop up special handling. So this is going to show me immediate and relevant information that is important to me as somebody who's going to be handling the case. I can go ahead and close that. And then you see this, the same UI, the same interface and capability. It's clean. It's, uh, it's, easy to read 
And uh, on the left-hand side, I have this product case playbook where it's going to quickly and easily show me the different stages of what I would need to do to handle this case. Similar concepts are going to be in the other workspaces where you have uh, different playbooks that you can, you can use to work through whatever work you're working on. In this case, whoops, um, you're able to, uh, to just go through here and do the work that you need while following the playbook. Of course, ensuring that all this information is available to you as an agent or a manager, and you're going to be able to ultimately help your customers deliver high quality results, right? And that's what what this is all about. So that's all I have for the demo right now. Um, I'll jump back in later on and uh, go ahead and show you some more stuff. Uh, but I think we're going to kick it over to Eros. Yeah, and, and as we segue over to Eros, we'll share out his screen. A um, couple of housekeeping items. One, some of you have already jumped in. Feel free to use the Q&A uh, section over in the, the WebEx for any questions. Um, we may answer them in flight just as you pop them in there, or maybe we'll we'll batch a few to you know for the end and, and do that. Also, what you'll see is uh, occasionally coming up are some um, survey questions. If you see a survey question pop up and uh, have a moment to go ahead and answer it, please do. We'll share the results back and kind of incorporate it into what we're doing today. But uh, Eros, you are up. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, John. Hopefully everyone can see my screen okay. You're good. Excellent. All right, I wanted to take a few minutes here to talk to you about some of the workspace experiences that are in the new UI. Eric touched on those briefly. And for those of you that haven't used workspaces before, I thought it might be worth just a kind of small explanation of what they are and, and what they do. So workspaces have been around for a little while, but their service now continues to extend them into more and more areas of the system. And they're really becoming the primary way to kind of interface with service now. A workspace is kind of a single pane of glass that you can use based around a specific experience. And it contains all of the things that you need to do your job function at that time. So here, for example, I'm looking at a workspace that contains kind of that traditional, almost a dashboard kind of form view where you're looking at different lists or details of a case record here. But notice that there's all of these other elements that exist within the workspace. So here, for example, I'm able to chat as part of a live chat experience as a chat agent. I can compose an email. I can uh, look at different knowledge articles that might be relevant to what I'm doing here based on agent assist, or I can execute against a playbook. So all of these things are tools that I might need in my day-to-day -day functionality as a CSM rep, and they're all available for me at one location uh, in the workspace. Now, based on that, just wanted to talk about some of the new workspaces that we're seeing specifically in San Diego. One of the new workspaces that I was really impressed with is around hardware asset management. And the hardware asset management workspace contains a number of different things. So here, what I'm looking at is just a general overview of hardware asset management. And what I really like about this is the ability, what ServiceNow calls important actions. So here, what I'm looking at are actions that I need to take against assets in the system. So there might be some assets that are missing their manufacturer, or maybe don't have a location or don't have a model number. And I could very quickly and easily see the assets that are missing that information, click a button, drill into the individual records and fill out the missing information. Uh, below, I also see some uh, quick statistics and reports around things that I'm concerned with as far as asset management with available drill downs into either dashboards or list uh, in every single one of those. But it's not limited to just this overview. So the asset management workspace also has more specific experiences in it. One of those, for example, is model management. So if you work with asset management inside of ServiceNow, you know how important models are. Models are kind of what we use to make sure that assets fall in line into the categories and um, that we're trying to classify them into. So here I have a specific subspace uh, of my workspace that allows me to just work with models. And I can look at my hardware models, consumables, bundles, contracts, software models, all in one space. And again, I get this concept of important assets, uh, actions. So here, if I have asset models that are missing their manufacturer or their um, 
life exploration, for example, I could drill right down in there and I could fill out that information for those pieces. So what you're seeing here and what you're going to see across these workspaces is if I'm an asset manager, I no longer have to work from a list view or from dashboards. I can get everything that I need to do my day to day job in a single pane of glass. Another example of this is our cloud operations workspace. This is a little simpler dashboard than what you saw with asset management, but still important nonetheless. So for those of you that are using cloud discovery, you can see all of your kind of cloud discovery actions in one spot here. So here I'm looking at everything, all the configuration items that were discovered within a given cloud. I can configure this to have all the different cloud spaces that I'm using. So if I have AWS or Azure, uh, that's all visible here. And then if I'm missing assets out in that cloud space, at the click of a button, I can go here and schedule scans uh, against my different cloud environments to pull in data. This is another interesting one that's been updated. And a lot of these dashboards that I'm bringing up, they may not be completely new uh, in San Diego, but they've seen a number of improvements um, from Rome. So this is our uh, field service management dispatcher workspace. So the idea here is that if I'm using uh, field service management and I have this concept of a dispatcher that's in the main office and sending out uh, field service agents to do repairs, for example, I can get everything that I need in a single spot. That includes a map of all of my current agents and where they're at as well as all of my current jobs and where they're at on that particular map. I could see my SLAs, uh, my field agent schedules, and all other pertinent pieces of information. Then um, at another tab in the same workspace, I'm able to look at my actual work orders and see a timeline of those work orders and the agents that they're assigned to. I can drag and drop to make additional assignments or change assignments from within the workspace. Finally, another new workspace that we have here is around GRC. What's happening with a lot of these workspaces is if you've worked with this GRC workspace before, it might look familiar to you. But the big update here, and it's happened in a number of workspaces over these releases, is that now everything is configurable. So here, for example, I can see two different views of risk management on my GRC workspace. And all of this can be configured, assuming you have the rights right from the workspace itself. So I can determine you know, what are the critical pieces of information that I need to see and take action on uh, within the workspace, and then configure those either for all of my fulfillers or specific fulfillers within the piece. So you're seeing that over and over now in a number of different workspaces, this kind of configurability. Uh, there is also the ability to kind of construct new workspace UIs and build applications within the and integrations within the workspace. So I'm really excited about how this changes the way that we work. And I'm sure that you'll see ServiceNow continue to build these out uh, across the platform. Really, they are becoming the primary mechanism for interfacing with ServiceNow. And at this point, I'm gonna toss it over to Jay. So let me go ahead and uh, stop sharing here and uh, we'll move the ball over. So Eros, as we're doing that, a um, couple things. I'm gonna fire a few questions out that have been coming in, uh, see if the team wants to handle those uh, while we go. But also, we're gonna close out the current poll in the chat and um, we'll go ahead and do that now. Thanks for those who participated on it. Another one will come up in a little bit. So from a question perspective, um, getting a lot of good stuff in here. Let's hit a couple of them. Um, question was specifically about, um, does HAM workspace require HAM Pro? It's a question that's out there. Don't know if we've got that answer handy. That is an excellent question. All right, stump the band. And I'll tell you what, we will get back to whoever submitted that question and, uh, and answer that. I wanna make sure that uh, I don't get a licensing question wrong. Yeah, that sounds like it makes sense. Um, a couple of other questions I think we're gonna roll up to here. I think we're already to roll on that. And then from the 
polling perspective, just so you know, Eros, the, the question was, are you currently leveraging workspaces? And looks like we've got um, uh, a the results up there um, and uh, pretty pretty balanced in one sense, but um, you know more so on the no side. So I think a lot of room for people to grow there and begin utilizing or leveraging the new technology. Excellent. All right, Jay, you're up. Thank you. I appreciate that. Everybody see the screen okay? You're good. Okay, here we go. So uh, we're going to take a look at the financial services for banking and how ServiceNow elevates banking experiences for customers and employees. The Now Platform's financial services offerings were designed to address the challenges associated with disconnect from the front to the middle and back office functions, making sure that all encounters with customers are high touch by delivering high tech simplicity with multi-channel experiences while accelerating results for today's processes and preparing for the future by maximizing the value of legacy systems with seamless integration into the platform. A recent study found that 40% of the time is spent in global operations are what we call the messy middle, performing tasks that are a high administrative burden on many within the organization. Systems need to direct such requests and work more efficiently. And you can see the measured results from a recent McKinsey study that, you know, I think the bottom line is that automation improves customer service that leads to consumer loyalty while reducing cost. And, you know, we talked about that focus on the front to back transformation and the lack of visibility is creating fragmentation, not just in the customer experience or employee engagement level, but also at the employee workflow level. And it's exacerbated by fragmentation with siloed systems on the back end. The front office is very manual today. Lots of paper-based processes. Mobile is becoming more prevalent, but emails are still heavily used. The middle office presents real complexity, needing to talk to different front office entry points and then get the process done in combination with the back office. And you know, we found that the back office is siloed in nature not fully customer focused on its thinking about data, but more engaged in departmental needs. And you can see the validation there on the right as to what we're hearing in the industry at large. Else doesn't wanna work. There we go. So the now platform emanates from a single data model which enables the platform to provide our financial services customers with a single system of action, which is a key differentiator for ServiceNow. We can help any C-suite or line of business owner get a single lens across IT, employee workflows, customer experience, risk and compliance, and operations. So, Going back to the San Diego release enhancements, let's explore some specific enhancements for financial services. We know that digital transformation is foundationally changing banking experience, and we believe that banks succeed by positioning client needs at the center of their operational design. In the San Diego release, Financial Services Operations, or FSO, is completing its solution set for the major revenue centers of banks, making it easier for them to deliver effortless banking experiences. Our banking offering will now include deposit operations in addition to card, payment, and loan applications. With our connected platform, banks can streamline deposit operations to save time and cost while also relying on client lifecycle operations to save time collecting client and account information. Our new financial services core capabilities also provide curated views of real-time information so front, middle, and back offices can act on client requests quickly and easily. Financial services operations was originally designed with compliance at the forefront. So end-to-end -end auditing and traceability are embedded in each process. It was also built for inter interoperability with other industry tools and aligns to the banking industry architecture standard. With now uh, ServiceNow Financial Services Operations, Institutions can coordinate account servicing across internal departments to deliver effortless banking experiences every time. 
The deposit operations application helps teams complete work faster by automating and optimizing the most common checking, savings, and certificate of deposit account request. This application also leverages process optimization native to the platform it, to analyze and identify operational bottlenecks so that performance is continually improved. The challenge is that most relationship managers and deposit operations specialists spend too much time on the administrative work associated with, with the account request. And often that's at the expense of delivering personalized services to clients. With deposit operations, account updates, standing order modifications, account origination and closures are systematically presented to the bank's front, middle and back offices. Everyone can view can verify and review requests without manually routing work across departments. This supports the concept that banks build client trust by delivering consistent experiences. With client lifecycle process management tools, banks streamline the collection of documentation required for onboarding, address updates, name changes, know your customer or KYC updates, and notices of death, all in compliance with regional regulations. Departments across the enterprise can reference account maintenance documents and trust that they are routed for validation, including clients, third party KYC service providers. It can take weeks, sometimes months to close a bank account after a notice of death. The process is complex, requiring several requests for additional information from the parties involved. And this really strains the banking relationship at a time when the decedent's executor or beneficiary may be contemplating whether to continue a relationship with the institution. Banking professionals can now seamlessly manage account updates throughout the relationship lifecycle in a compliant manner. By sharing a single record of client documentation across departments, banks can reduce the time spent collecting information that may already be available within their institutions. And we have also enhanced our core capabilities for financial institutions. Banks can securely integrate their core systems with new out of the box remote tables for financial services. This enhancement reduces development time by eliminating the need to recreate the ServiceNow data model for integrations. With synchronized information, banks can securely act on client needs with real time data. With the new dynamic service selector, client data is protected by permissions and banking professionals can resolve requests quickly. This tool narrows the set of service types in view based on the client profile, making it simpler and easier to kick off service requests of all kinds. So that kind of brings us to the close of just a real quick overview of financial services on the NOW platform. And so I will stop all sharing right. and throw this back over to Eros. Sounds good. And uh, hey, the poll, by the way, uh, to see if, if your company's in financial management space, um, looks like we got a small group of about uh, uh, 6% um, that came in and uh, said yes. Thanks for sharing. Girls. Back. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen here. And I wanted to talk to you briefly about virtual agents. Um, for those of you that have not used virtual agents yet, the idea here is to create uh, an AI based experience that you can interact uh, where your users can interact with many of the elements that you already have available within ServiceNow. There are a number of components to this. So there is a virtual agent designer that you're seeing here on the screen that lets you create conversation paths and actions and workflows that can be triggered by the virtual agent. There's back end analysis here where the system can recommend new virtual agent experiences based on questions that your users are asking. Uh, there are natural language processors so that we can try to better understand uh, the questions that your users are asking and then trigger specific virtual agent experiences. And then aside from the designer, there are just dozens and dozens of pre-built agent experiences 
throughout the ServiceNow platform in a number of the different uh, suites. And in San Diego specifically, you're going to see two brand new virtual agent experiences. So one of these is built around software asset management, where you're able to actually request the installation of software. So someone can chat with the virtual agent, uh, they can find software that's out there in your uh, software catalog, and then request the installation of that piece of software. If they have software scheduled for installation, they can also leverage uh, that same virtual agent now to cancel uh, an existing software installation. And for those of you using procurement service management, uh, there is a new kind of set of virtual agent experiences around procurement service agent uh, management where you can search for products and then you can actually order and procure a product directly from the virtual agent. And in that same set of experiences, you're able to come back now and see the status of any current orders that you have out there and, uh, and go ahead and get status updates on those orders. So these two new experiences are combined with a number of kind of incremental um, upgrades throughout the virtual agent platform, including some better search performance and better recommendation performance and the ability to see analytics for both your virtual and physical agents in a singular location. So kind of a, a brief new update, but I thought it was important for those of us that are using virtual agents. And on that, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing here and I will pass it over to Eric. John, are we going to close out the poll here for virtual agents? How are we doing there? I think we are. We're going to close that out and we're going to let Eric take us for our, our last section. And then we've got a quick wrap up going on. Um, but just to everybody on, really appreciate the, the feedback. Lots of questions coming in. We're doing our best to answer them kind of in line, but we'll make sure that if we don't get to anything, um, we'll follow up uh, either at the end of the session or um, afterwards. Um, yeah, the poll came in and um, you know we're looking again, a very, very small percentage of folks are using virtual agent. And Eros, I think this is something that you know we're seeing right across the client base. And I think that move to virtual agent um, you know, artificial intelligence, um, kind of automating that kind of self-help. There's a lot of trepidation around that because of you're, you're kind of changing the support model. I know what I've seen our consultants talk about is how do you get ready for virtual agent? And a lot of that has to do with getting a very strong knowledge base, taking a look at the data of the requests and incidents coming in. Um, this way, as you, you begin to leverage virtual agent, um, there's a lot behind it already. And um, that first experience will be sharp. So, um, you know, certainly an area we help a lot of clients with, but we do understand it's a bit of a crawl, walk, run. Yeah, and I'll I'll just add to that is there's a couple of things I know that you guys have done for some of your customers where you can analyze what's been going on inside an instance to actually determine and then nominate some things that you could actually put into production with a virtual agent. So it's it's a good opportunity to consult with you guys and, and check that out because you can make some pretty strong recommendations and know that you'll immediately see value because you know something can be automated through virtual agent. So, yeah, thanks, Eric. Cool, no problem. So a couple of more things I want to talk to everybody about. The first being strategic portfolio management, also known as SPM, but previously known as ITBM. So you may have heard about IT business management that is now and for evermore until they change it maybe again, uh, known as SPM. And uh, with the San Diego release, that's what it's going to be called. We're basically packaging everything that was ITBM together, along with adding a few enhancements to a bunch of different capabilities. The biggest takeaway from uh, everything that you do with ITBM, also known now known as SPM, is that we really want to enable you to extract the most value out of the work that you are doing and the work that is being performed within the organization. And that's what this is all about. So one of the key components of this is uh, alignment planner workspace. It's another workspace enhancement to uh, San Diego. And in this case, we're going to be utilizing uh, the new look and feel, obviously, but also the um, roadmap planning capabilities and they're essentially going to allow you to take the uh, 
the information that you have within the roadmap and uh, bring all the sh stakeholders together and visualize what's going on, where it is and when, and um, be able to monitor those milestones across the project and figure out what it is you need to do. Uh, you're also going to be able to utilize the uh, scaled agile framework, also known as SAFE, and that's going to be integrated by default into this system. And then uh, we also have ties into Azure DevOps. So if you want to use that here, you can do that too. So digital portfolio management is also um, new workspace here in San Diego, and um, it's going to give customers a unified workspace that allows your owners to holistically view and collectively manage their services and applications throughout the full life cycle. So if you're building services and applications for certain parts of your organization, you're going to be able to use digital portfolio management to manage those those components and also understand uh, what that portfolio performance looks like. You're going to be able to make informed budgetary decisions because of that. Uh, you're also going to be able to ingest new ideas and understand what backlogs you have in order to be able to provide different services and uh, adjust your roadmap accordingly. Then, of course, you also have resource management. So resource management is obviously critical. Uh, this is a store app. So if you uh, have SPM, you can then go into the ServiceNow store and download it into your instance. Um, the ServiceNow resource management application enables organizations to accurately plan for available resources to deliver work faster. Uh, having this at your fingertips is going to give you, uh, at a glance, understanding of where all your resources are and what they're working on and what you have uh, in in the available uh, queue and what you want them to be working on. Um, there's a new way of the new UI allows you to uh, help search by group and role uh, to quickly go through a big list of resources. And um, you can also update uh, your resource capacity with resource finder for better planning and allocation. You also have Project Workspace. Uh, Project Workspace has a new look and feel, obviously. So some of the data visualization within here is going to be updated, a little bit cleaner, easier to use, see more at once. Um, you're, uh, you're also going to... Um, excuse me. You, whoops. You're also going to see... Uh, from the point of view, the project manager's productivity, right? That this is what Project Workspace is all about. Uh, they're going to monitor all of your project tasks across the board, um, and then they're going to be able to use this to do bulk editing of their pro different projects. And it's got drag and drop simplicity, and it is included with the license. And then, um, lastly, with SPM, we have uh, utilizing the entire. Uh, common service data model. We're aligning to that nomenclature, the entire framework within common service data model. Data model. So what this allows you to do is to have enhanced visibility across all of the products, the stuff that you're working in, and the workflow and um, the uh, the containers of those different pieces of information and those items. Um, they are going to be standardized across the board, and that's going to allow you to build out very extensive uh, workflows to be able to utilize a common set of instructions and information, right? This framework becomes the standard across the entire ServiceNow platform, not just within um, SPM. And that allows you, in specifically with SPM, items such as ideas, demands, projects, those kinds of things, they're going to be able to be tracked across the entire platform if necessary. And ultimately, that's going to allow your team, as large as it can be, to have a total holistic view of every stage and every step in the product lifecycle. So switching gears, talking about customer service management. Within customer service management, we really have two components, customer engagement and the capabilities that power that, and then customer operations and the capabilities that power that. So 
with a lot of our new capabilities, whether it's CSM or beyond, uh, the new UI empowers a couple of different things to help efficiency within that individual application. So there are a lot of things that are cleaned up. You obviously using the light or dark theme. That's great. We also have uh, the different ways of uh, controlling the amount of text that you see with compact mode. So within CSM, especially, that's really important because the cases and the information tend to be uh, significant. So we're able to, to utilize the new UI and make that a lot more efficient. Uh, the, U, the new unified navigation is going to make jumping between uh, active cases and assigned cases and workspaces much, much easier because it's just the number of tabs, which you can then create favorites. So your uh, case agents are gonna be much more efficient in, in being able to help their customers. And then, of course, the new UI uh, is going to help uh, your data visualization. And that data visualization is going to be really important because now we're going to be able to pull out specific metrics about what the agents are doing inside the workspace. So as your agents are working with your customers and they're using different components of the workspace, maybe you've configured something special with UI Builder. The, you're going to be able to go in and look at what is being used, what's not being used, how long is it taking them to use it, and are the changes that you've made or uh, are, are effective, and do you need to make some other changes to make your customer agents even more effective. Sensitive data handling, this is also really important, especially when you're trying to maintain certain levels of compliance uh, for regulatory bodies. So when you have a customer, like you have here on the left-hand side, they're using their phone, they're chatting with your uh, agent, and they type in their social security number, we're going to automatically identify that that is a social security number or that it's sensitive information, and we're going to block it out so the agent can't actually use it. And uh, you can create different data sensitivity rules to identify and, um, and hide different information based on the use case. So switching to customer operations, also a component of CSM, we have order management. Order management's a new product in San Diego. Uh, this has capabilities that enable companies to capture, monitor, and fulfill orders for customers. Um, we're going to continue to enhance these capabilities uh, with uh, store releases to continue to bring new features and capabilities to this. And then as a component of that and other things you're doing within CSM, we also have customer access management. And essentially what this is, is it allows you to have a case or an order or something you're working on and then have related parties to be able to access and track those cases as well. So if somebody wants to have an authorized representative or somebody else to watch or monitor or be authorized to make changes on their behalf, you can go ahead and add them to this and then they'll be able to view what's going on. And ultimately that's gonna allow your customers to track things more easily because they can have more people in charge or informed about what's going on. We also have language detection in case management. So when you create a case, if it was opened and the language that it was opened in is Spanish, not only is it going to um, inform the case worker that, that it, that's what it is, but it'll help you automatically route these cases to different workers or teams based on what the language and skills are that are required. Uh, you can also have this automatically recommend certain knowledge base articles or other relevant information that's inside the platform to help the agent and also the end user. Uh, and then, of course, it, this ties back into our uh, translation capabilities. So you can also translate the information so we'll understand what the language is. And then it allows you to potentially utilize different case agents in different time zones or regions that maybe don't know uh, the language. And then you can see it, understand it, translate it, or route it to the right party to work on it. And then lastly, with uh, customer service management, we are greatly enhancing our integration uh, hub capability. Uh, so we're going to have further enhancements to third-party systems. So we want to continue that end-to-end -end digitization. So we're going to have enhancements with, uh, for, and further enhancements with Qualtrics, Microsoft Dynamics, Oracle, SAP, and Microsoft Teams. 
And we're going to continue to enhance that, as you know, we do across the platform. Integration Hub is a huge uh, connectivity point for ServiceNow to connect into all different other kinds of systems of record and other applications you may be using to get them in and then workflow that data. So that's all I have this afternoon. I appreciate it. Thanks, awesome. Eric. And as you pass the ball back to me, we'll we'll kind of wrap a couple things up. And and one of the things I'd love to to share with everybody here is in the chat um, or, or or the Q and A. If you have a topic you'd like to see us do uh, in the next few months, please put that in there. Let us know what you're interested in. We'd love to tailor the presentation, um, you know, one of the upcoming ones. By the way, that last poll just came in. Um, about 7% of you guys are currently leveraging strategic por portfolio management or ITBM. Um, and you've got another 6% or so that are planning it. Um, you know, if you guys are interested, reach out to us. We're actually using it intensively here at CDW. So we're not just one of the top partners, we're one of the top consumers of ServiceNow, and we're happy to share with you how we're using it and give you some thoughts along that line. So as far as bringing it home here and just kind of wrapping things up for you, um, the first thing I'd like to, to kind of point out is, if you're on this session, there's a good chance you're a CDW customer, maybe even a serious customer, welcome. Uh, and you've got access to one of the top ServiceNow uh, teams in the world. And, and what does that mean? If you'd like to get together and just chat, um, we can bring resources to a meeting. We'll have a virtual cup of coffee. We'll do it in person if we can, but, but sometimes easier just to get together over the web. And um, let's talk about your upgrade. We'll help answer questions live for you, those kinds of things. We're not talking about a billable event or cost to that. We'd like to chat with you, learn more about how you're using ServiceNow and help you any way we can. Um, we have programs like a continuous improvement plan, which is something we've got over 100 customers on. It's a quarterly program where your team attaches to a small team here that you go to for overlap, um, enhancements, uh, working on your ServiceNow backlog, and of course, things like upgrades. It's a light touch program in a relatively inexpensive way to extend your team. Um, and also, um, Number three, this isn't really about technology. Um, yeah, the platform is going to allow us to do things a lot easier, but what are those things we're doing? So when you're doing an upgrade, um, for example, planning for San Diego, it is a great time to think about upgrading your processes too, right? And we can help you with that. So you have some folks on our team on the advisory services that focus on the people and process side. Um, happy to bring them to a meeting of yours and grab a cup of coffee on that. So let us know how we can help. You can simply reply to the invites you have. Uh, let us know where you think we might be able to provide some additional value and uh, you'll hear from us. So thanks again to everybody. Um, appreciate the, the time here. Um, Eric, Eros, Jay, thanks for the, the content and to everyone who attended. Thanks for, for giving us some of your time. Hope you found it valuable and look forward to, to having you join our, our next session in April. Thanks everybody. Thank you.